Imagine two people who need to share a secret, for example, a numeric key. The simplest solution is to make copies of that secret and share it. But what happens when no single person should have full access to a secret? For example, missile launch codes or passwords for large money transfers, which may require multiple people to confirm. In these situations, we require some minimum number of people to come to a consensus before applying a key. The simplest approach to this problem is to split up the secret into pieces or shares and keep them secret from one another. Then combine the secret shares whenever they need to apply a secret key. The problem with this method is each half of the key gives away partial information about the secret to each person. For example, with an eight digit secret, if one person knows the first four digits, then they only need to guess through 10,000 possible combinations to find the key whereas someone with no information would need to guess from 100 million possible combinations. Recall that the definition of perfect secrecy from an information theory perspective requires that every possible key look equally likely. This means that someone with one share is no more likely to guess the key than someone who doesn't have a share. In order to prevent the information leak, we need to introduce some randomness. For example, if the secret was an image, we could protect that secret by adding a random image to it, resulting in an unrecognizable scrambled image. Then one person could take the random image, the other could take the scrambled image. And when they need to recover the original image, they just subtract the random image from the scrambled image. In this case, the secret shares on their own contain no information about the original image but together they recover it perfectly. That's the idea with images, but we can do the same thing numerically. Take this secret and add a random number to it using modular arithmetic, which means we add the numbers digit by digit, and if the result is 10 or above, we only show the remainder and no carry operations occur. So 11 becomes a one. This allows the secret to be broken into random looking pieces which we can give to each person without either of them seeing the original secret. One person gets the random number, the other gets the result of adding the secret to a random number or a random secret. There is no way to extract the original number from what is available to either person. For example, if we take 5 plus 6 equals 1 and I give you only the 1, you have no information about what two numbers led to it. So to determine the secret, the two participants must come together and subtract their numbers to reverse the random process and recover the secret. This simple procedure is known as a one-time pad and was proven to be perfectly secret by Claude Shannon. But we aren't quite done yet because when we try this approach with many participants, we run into another problem. Using this method, all shares are required to generate the secret. If one of the eight people go missing, loses a key, or decides not to cooperate, the secret is then lost to everyone. Practically speaking, this is not acceptable for many applications since it has one point of failure. In these cases, what we need is a system where only some of the eight people need to come together to recover the secret. For example, we might require that at least five out of eight people come together. This problem was solved in 1979 by Adi Shamir who published a paper which tackled the problem of sharing a secret amongst multiple parties. He expanded the idea geometrically by imagining the secret as a point in space and the shares as points along a secret random curve. For example, imagine we have a secret number shared amongst three people and we want to make sure that at least two are needed to recover the secret. His key insight was to think about this number as a secret point in 2D space, where the secret is a point on the y-axis, where the y-coordinate of that point is a number we want to keep secret. Then we introduce randomness by selecting a random point in the 2D plane. And out of those two points, we form a secret line. This trick effectively expands the secret from a point to a line creating lots of redundancy out of which we can create as many shares as we wish, where each share is a point anywhere on the secret line. Now, all we need is any two shares to recover the secret line. Once we know the line, we can see where it intersects the y-axis, and finally, the y-coordinate of that point is our secret. With this method, we can share a secret with as many people as we need, which we call n, and make sure that any two people can recover the secret. 
known as a 2N scheme. But if we want to increase the minimum number of people needed to recover a secret, then we need to simply turn our line into a curve. For example, the simplest curve is a parabola which can be defined by three points. To create a secret parabola, we start with the secret point as before, and then we generate two random points to define the secret curve. Then we can generate as many secret shares as we'd like along the curve. Recall that the equation for a parabola takes the following form, and since this equation has three parameters, A, B, and C, we need any three points along the curve to solve for a given parameter. So ignoring everything and given any three shares, we can fully recover the curve. And then we can solve for C, which is the secret point or y-intercept, to get back the secret number. This is known as a 3N scheme since we need at least three shares to recover the secret. If instead we want a minimum of four shares to define the secret, then we'll need to move up to a cubic curve, which will require four points to define, and recover the secret in the same way using any four points. This is known as a 4N scheme. Finally, we can generalize the scheme to work with any subset size k we desire by using a curve which is defined by k points. Then we can generate as many shares as we'd want, defined by n, leading to a KN sharing scheme, where K is the minimum number of shares to unlock a secret. And that's it. In practice, these same ideas apply when we work with integer coordinates and modulo operations instead of real numbers, which makes the scheme practical to implement. And because we have efficient algorithms for computing these curves, it makes this method a practical key management solution. It is also interesting to notice that the methods we are using here rely on a well-known algorithm called a Reed-Solomon code. Reed-Solomon codes were originally developed for erasure and error correction, where a transmission or message is broken up into n pieces. And some of these pieces can be lost during transmission due to erasures, which is the same as a lost share. The Reed-Solomon code enables data reconstruction on the receiving end as long as k of the pieces arrive. Plus, there are many other connections as well, such as secure multi-party computation and data privacy, which are widely used to this day. All thanks to an elegant solution for how to share our secrets.